Um, it was a rough morning, as we all know. Uh, the storms, as we anticipated, came through. They were heavy. Uh, they dumped a lot of water on ground that could barely support it. I mean, we are completely saturated, uh, which led to a lot of street flooding, um, particularly earlier this morning from about 7 until about 12 o'clock. Uh, we were really having some challenges. I think we had uh, close to 40 street closures, largely in the South Tampa area. And as we all know, South Tampa is like a bowl. Uh, the topography makes it very, very difficult to move this much water out of South Tampa. Um, but I think by and large, things have gotten better. Uh, the rains have stopped for the most part. There may be some more rain later on this afternoon, but according to all of your stations, it will not nearly be as heavy as what we experienced. The water is starting to recede. Um, I've been driving all over the city to some of the hot spots and have seen the water start to recede. So I think over the next couple hours, uh, the situation will get much better. The one caveat to that is high tides at five o'clock and the tidal flows affect the ability for the water to leave the streets. At a high tide, we're not gonna get as quick of a drainage as we would if it was low tide and it could run into the uh, into the bay pretty quickly. So high tide at five o'clock. I need people who are going home in the afternoon to be aware of that. We have been tweeting profusively the locations of the closures. Um, pay attention to that. Look at it before you go home. If you have to go through areas that you know are historically low line and problems, please go through slowly. What happens is when you go through these areas, your car creates a wake. That wake pushes water into houses, it pushes water into businesses. So if you absolutely have to go through those areas, please be respectful of your neighbors and the businesses along the route and make sure that you don't create that kind of wake. We have given away, as you can see here, over the last three days, 6,700 sandbags. These are people that are coming here to get sandbags from our locations because potentially they are having water intruding into their business or their house. Um, it has been a great effort on the part of our city employees who have been out here literally for their three days, making sure that citizens who wanted to come here could get their sandbags, 6,700 sandbags. Our stormwater treatment plant, yesterday when we briefed you, we were pumping what is normally a 60 million gallon a day uh, wastewater and stormwater uh, treatment plant. That's what we average. On Saturday, we averaged 160 million gallons pushing through those plants. Today, we're at about 190 million gallons. We are absolutely at the capacity of these plants. They are working 24 seven. We've had some flooding issues in the plants and have had to bypass some, but we are pushing this water as fast as we can, as quickly as we can. Um, we did suspend solid waste collection, garbage pickup today in certain areas because of the flooding, our drivers could not get through. Uh, we should expect the next collection for what would have been today on Thursday. So trash pickup suspended today, will come back again on Thursday. We are not gonna risk our drivers um, and their health and their safety. Uh, so we will pick up your trash on Thursday. Please bear with us moving forward. Uh, as many of you saw, the place where we briefed yesterday at Regency Cove, um, is now a river. Uh, the water came through and basically took out the remnants of that road that we saw yesterday. Uh, there's about 100 residents in Regency Cove that do not have water. They are able to get out of Regency Cove and buy water if they need to, uh, but that situation is much worse than what we saw yesterday. Um, I think we're over the worst of it. Uh, Governor Scott called me today uh, at about 12 o'clock to see whether there's anything that he could do. Um, at this point, I think we've got pretty much everything handled as best we can um, in these extreme conditions, record amounts of rainfall. I would only ask two things, that as you go home tonight, pick your route carefully, drive slowly. I was just looking at a site down here at Lake Avenue um, and there was a kid swimming in the middle of the road. Don't do that. The water's not safe. There's no telling what's in there. There could be snakes in there. There could be bacteria in there. We don't need children swimming in the flooded streets. I mean, that's just plain dumb. Don't do it. Don't let your kids do it. Um, let me bring up uh, Assistant Police Chief Brian Dugan 
uh, followed by Assistant Fire Chief Nicholas Cicero, followed by the administrator for a lot of our infrastructure departments, uh, Brad Baird, and we can uh, continue this briefing. Brian. At the police department, we're seeing about a 50% increase in calls for service for um, this time last week. Uh, we're doing our best to close the streets as they flood as quickly as we can get to them. Uh, where we are struggling as a police department is closing the streets in a timely manner because they are flooding so quickly that we can't get there and we're a bit of stretched as trying to be able to get and respond to the areas as necessary. As soon as we can, we are reopening the streets. The water clearly will quickly uh, clear out, but the concern is if the tide comes in again, they will quickly flood. And we're doing our best to have people watching those areas so we can quickly respond to them. Uh, what we are asking is that people let us know what's going on. We have cops out there. Our cops are out there. They're soaked to the bone right now. Once you get wet in this weather, they're not drying out. They've had some very long days, but they're doing what we do best, and that's uh, protecting and serving and doing everything we can. Good morning. Uh, fire rescue has had an uh, increased tempo, an operational tempo uh, this afternoon uh, and this morning dealing with the rains, but uh, we're able to handle all calls for service. We have been able to handle all calls for service. And just like other residences, uh, the firehouses are all open and functioning and have been able to uh, sustain operation in all those firehouses. Uh, we are negotiating around high water uh, areas. Uh, we have totally appreciated the efforts of PD, uh, making sure we're aware of the street closures that we've been neg negotiating those, uh, those high waters. We have uh, pre-positioned some apparatus to assist uh, if needed in high water areas, but thus far it's just been a precautionary measure and we really haven't had to use that. We've been able to sustain all the operations with what we have uh, normally positioned throughout the city. Uh, we are uh, closely uh, in communication through the city EOC and the county EOC as far as hospital operations to ensure we have the capacity and the means to reach all hospitals uh, uh, as required and thus far we have had no issues or breaks of service with response to that. Uh, we may have to uh, take a, a slight detour but everything has been functioning fine. We've been able to reach all hospitals. So we continue our vigilance and, uh, and our response uh, throughout the rest of the day and the evening. Uh, good afternoon, Brad Bear, Public Works and Utilities Administrator. Um, just want to reiterate that uh, both the stormwater system and the wastewater system are overloaded. Um, both uh, systems have pumping stations that are uh, maxed out, pumping all they can. And um, in wastewater's uh, case, they've been pumping uh, for six and seven days straight at at 100%. Um, so we. We're doing all we can there. We have to let the stormwater system work, uh, work its magic to, to get rid of the rest of the water so that we can uh, clear the streets and, and open them to traffic. Um, I want to uh, reiterate what the mayor said with regard to uh, the standing water that uh, is still in the roadways. Please keep, uh, keep out of it. Uh, keep your children out of it. I've, I've seen people swimming in different areas of the city. Um, you know, please stay out of that water. There's all kinds of bacteria and viruses that could be could be present. So, um, with that, I'll turn it back over to the mayor for questions. Gene, I'm sorry. Good afternoon, Gene Duncan, Transportation and Stormwater Services. I'd just like to put out a phone number for you all: 813-274-3101. This is our 24/7 call number for any flooding issues that you're seeing. We do ask that you um, consider that those be urgent issues. As the mayor mentioned, the tide will be uh, going down and as it recedes and as the rain recedes, so will these flooded streets. So if it's a matter of being patient, we appreciate your patience. But if it is an urgent matter, please feel free to call that number 24 seven and we'll do our best to uh, address your issues. We do have all hands on deck, taking phone calls and going out and addressing the drainage issues. So thank you. None of this could uh, have been accomplished without the hard work of 
Tampa Police Department, Tampa Fire Rescue, our Public Works employees, our Parks and Recreation employees. They literally have been working almost around the clock for the last three days. They are hot, they are tired, they are wet. Uh, they've been helping motorists, they've been pulling people out of cars. They have done absolutely amazing work and uh, I think this city is, is proud of our city employees. And I, and I know they want some rest, and hopefully tonight they might be able to get it. So we'll take any questions right now. Well, Mr. Mayor, you talked about that seriously. Hold on, I'll get you in a second, Mel. Hey, Diane. What, what area are you going to be paying close attention to at 5 o'clock for high time? Uh, South Tampa is, is ground zero. I mean, that's where the bulk of the flooding has been. Because it's a low-lying area, it tends to hold the water more so. Uh, so we will be watching the South Tampa area. We know where the streets are that have been problematic. They've been that way for decades. Uh, so we'll be staying on top of that. We'll be moving barricades as we can, as the roads become passable. But there still will be a lot of standing water, so people need to drive slowly and not create that wake. Yep. Well, Mr. Yep. Mayor, Mel. you're uh, live on News Channel 8 right now talking to some of our viewers out there who are obviously concerned about the flooding. You spoke yesterday, and there was a real urgency in your voice as there is with the flooding that's today. Can you talk about uh, the seriousness of this situation? Sure. I mean, folks need to pay attention. You know, if you can stay home, stay home avoid the areas that are flooded. I mean, there are all kinds of issues out there with people being out on the roads. We don't want to put our firefighters and our cops at risk, and we don't want structural damage done to people's houses by people driving through flooded areas and creating that wake. So just use common sense, drive slowly, plan accordingly, leave work early if you have to. Um, we're gonna get through this, but we need one more day of people doing the right thing um, by their neighbors. Have you ever seen it this bad? I've lived here since 1982, and I've lived through a lot of tropical storms and a number of hurricanes. Um, I have never seen this much water over this extended period of time uh, in the 30 years that I've lived here. Uh, the ground is absolutely saturated. Um, we're pumping at is our capacity. Um, so I no, I have not seen anything like this before. Do you think it's just the nonstop rain that we have? We just have not had a break from the rain, really, not just in the past couple of days, but the past couple of weeks. We've not seen sunshine in days. Well, we're fighting Mother Nature here, and uh, she is a cool, cruel mistress. Um, you know, we're doing the best we can with the capacity that we have, uh, but some things you're just, you just have to roll with the punches and then manage it as best you can and then clean up after it. This is one of those cases, you know, I don't know whether it's climate change or what, and I'm not afraid to say climate change, um, but we, uh, we've had a lot of water, Mel. We've had a lot of water. Uh, we're gonna continue to get some tonight, but I think we've gone through the worst of it. What have you heard from residents? You said you've been going around the city yeah. and talking to people, you know, house to house, neighborhood to neighborhood. What are people saying to you? I think people are saying what I just said, is they've never seen this. Even generational families um, have never seen this much water in this concentrated period of time. They recognize that South Tampa has its problems in terms of drainage. Um, they also recognize, I think, that we need a big infusion of capital if we're gonna fix this problem, and hopefully City Council will provide that to us. Um, I think they are as uh, astounded as the rest of us are about the amount of water, but they also cope. You know, they're good folks. They're used to living in, in Tampa. They know it rains, it rains hard. It floods in certain areas. Um, and for the most part, they accommodate. What I can't predict is people being stupid. And I would hope that people who are watching this would know. Just, you know, use common sense. Can you talk about the resources that you said you ran away from what, 6,700 sand bags? Yep. Do you have that sand? You know, what are we looking at? The next well, it depends on what the weather is. I mean, I think the bulk of it has passed, um, if your weather folks are accurate. Um, we had to reload last night to get more sand. Uh, the county provided us with some. Um, I think we have enough to make it through the next day or so, and then we'll make a decision as to whether or not we have to reload. As you can see, it goes fast. I mean, 6,500 sandbags is a lot of sandbags, but that's what we're here to do. We're here to help, and when we have neighbors who are in distress, we're going to stand up and we're going to say, what can we do for you? And so it's been great to see the response. These guys, our parks employees, have been out here since 8 o'clock loading those sandbags. Um, they're tired. You know, they've been at it for three days. Um, those are the heroes. And it's a minute-by-minute minute, uh, decision-making process, I would imagine, because you guys are just watching the weather like we are and trying to make decisions about wastewater and uh, solid waste of you know, garbage pickup, things like that. It is indeed. Um, I come to work with my police radio and I go to bed with my police radio. And you know, monitoring the capacity of the plants, 
looking at the outages, looking where switches and the circuits have been tripped. I mean, that's what these folks do every day. And so they are on top of it um, on a minute by minute basis. And when we have to react, we do. When we deploy, we do. Uh, when we have to load up on resources, we will. Um, you know, we're, we're going to get through this and, and uh, you know, it's, it's going to be okay at the end. Who would you say the biggest challenge has been for the city? It's the street flooding. Uh, at this point, it's the vehicles that have been flooded out and getting them out of the road so we can open up the roads to traffic. Uh, there has been little structural flooding um, of, of a major uh, magnitude. It's largely been the street flooding and then the plants running at full capacity. Um, I would say that's been the biggest knock on wood. I mean, that's a problem that we can deal with. No loss of life, no injuries. Um, you know, Pasco County, Hernando County has a whole separate set of challenges with evacuations and the river rising. Here it's largely uh, stormwater. Yeah. And your advice one more time for residents who are watching right now, again, you know, you're live on News Channel 8, what would you tell them today and the days to come? Sure, I would tell them to have a plan, recognize that there are going to be streets that will be flooded, leave early if you have to, drive carefully, be considerate of your neighbors. If you have to go through areas where there's standing water, do it slowly. But if you can avoid standing water, please do it. Find another way to get home. Um, and if you see somebody in distress, obviously uh, do the right thing and go help them. Can you elaborate on the wastewater system? How dire is it? Is it at the point where people shouldn't be flushing? That kind of thing? No, no, not yet. And I think you're going to see us over the next day or so um, get, get back to normal capacities. I mean, it will take us a couple days. Um, you know, you see some of the manhole covers bubbling up. Um, that's just because of the amount of, of water we're having to deal with. I mean, I've never seen, and maybe Eric can tell you, us pumping at 190 million gallons a day when a normal day is 60 million gallons. I mean, that tells you how much water uh, and runoff that we're dealing with. Uh, but for the most part, you know, we're treating the water. Uh, we're doing the best we can. Um, time will be to our benefit as the water starts to recede and we can get back to normal um, capacity. But it's going to take a, at least two days probably. I'm going to let Eric talk. He's the sewage guy. Eric Weiss, director of the wastewater department. Can you repeat that? Um, when people, you know, I just want people to be aware when they're out in the streets or attempting to play in the water, when we see the, the water bubbling up from the sample covers, is that sewage essentially? That, that is wastewater surcharging the system because the pumping stations can't keep up, so it surcharges in those areas in the manholes where you'll see it coming out of the pit holes, we call them. So, so please stay away from those. They can um, contain harmful bacteria. So people think it's funny to swim in the water. They don't realize what they're maybe swimming in is sewage. Yeah. Correct. Can you elaborate a little bit on that? Yeah, there, there is harm. think it's funny to get in a boat or to swim across and play yeah. around. Again, I think it's been said a couple times, please stay away from those surcharging manholes. Not only viruses, bacteria, there could be animals in there, um, and other waste that comes you know, from homes to businesses. So please stay away. At five o'clock, high tide, what exactly will you guys do? We'll be doing exactly what we've been doing for the last three days. I mean, we'll be maintaining and monitoring. I mean, the, the issue of the tide affects how quickly the, the roads are going to recede, the water's going to recede. Because if it was low tide, the, the water could recede quicker because it would be moving out into the bay. With high tide, the bay will be pushing up, kind of creating a barrier that prohibits a, an expeditious drainage. But it's, you know, six hours from now, the tide will change and the, 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 uh, the water will recede a lot quicker. But it will not be flowing into the streets. It just will prohibit um, a quick, quicker ex, uh, exit of the water that's on the streets. Mr. Mayor, some of the streets seem to be still flooded. Are, are police active in, in shutting down those streets? We haven't, you know, we know that everyone is working around the clock, but. Where, where are some of those people shutting down those streets? Are we going to see more officers? Are we going to see more city workers yeah. uh, actually shutting them down, the streets that are completely flooded out? Well, Mel, we have uh, probably have 40 locations around the city that we have closed. I mean, we know where those places are. They have been barricaded. Uh, what we're seeing now is the water start to recede. Like I was on Kennedy Boulevard uh, about an hour ago, and literally the water receded probably two feet in, in the 15 minutes that I was there. So we know where they are. The vast majority of them have been barricaded. They will stay barricaded as long as they're a problem. Um, so that's, uh, I don't think you're gonna see any additional barricades put up. 
unless something happens tonight that we're not aware of. Yeah. Okay, so people do see flooded streets, they should call that number that we were. They should call that number. So yes. Yep. Come out. Yep. I think you know people feel better when they see you guys out there and, and shutting some of those streets down that are that are really impassable. These people shouldn't be going through. No, they shouldn't. And we're out there in our Humvees, um, in the uh, the high profile vehicles that we can get through the water in. Um, so if they will call us and there's an issue, the, the cops are traveling with the uh, barricades, public works is out there. We've got them deployed, we've got them stashed, if you will, um, in, the, in the difficult areas, but most of them have already been barricaded. If you see a barricade, please do not go around the barricade. I mean, we've been hearing reports all day of people trying to go around the barricade. I heard a report on the police radio coming in of someone dropping off a jet ski in the middle of Hyde Park. Now, don't be dumb. I mean, don't be dumb. You know, just go home, take your jet ski, take it out on Saturday at Courtney Campbell. Don't drive through Hyde Park on your jet ski. Um, I think as with any um, storm like this and any saturation like this, I think potholes are going to be a problem as the water gets underneath the road base. Um, I think we talked about yesterday that um, stormwater cave-ins uh, are going to be a problem um, as the water recedes and the, and the soil is loose and collapses in on itself. We've got 100-year-old pipes um, that when they get stressed this much, get weak. So I'm sure Eric is going to be very busy over the next couple months with uh, additional cave-ins, additional uh, leaks, additional cracks. But that's what happens when you have this kind of water. Um, just like we do every time. We, as soon as we find it, uh, we identify it, uh, and we fix it. It's not going to. It's gonna, not over after tomorrow. <laughs> no, it will not be over probably for two or three months, sir. Right. Yeah. 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 Just when we thought we had gotten ahead of the pothole problem, you know, th this water really does undermine the asphalt, um, you know, and, and really causes these depressions to occur, which just exacerbates the problem. Well, hopefully uh, council uh, will approve the uh, stormwater fee increase. Uh, we've accounted for that in this year's budget. If they do it, that will give us an additional $200 million uh, to start constructing uh, new stormwater and wastewater projects. Uh, it will clean out retention ponds, you know, clean out ditches. But in this case, it's, it's all about the money. I mean, you gotta have the resources to be able to do this. Um, and I think council, to their credit, recognizes that and I think the public today if they didn't know already realizes that in order to upgrade you know a 60 70 80 year old system it's going to take resources and if we want to do it in a significant way not that we're going to fix everything but that 200 million dollars would go a long way to mitigate a lot of the problems that we're seeing particularly in South Tampa and in the North Tampa areas. Uh, it's been decades in the making and largely about money. I mean, that, that is a, if not a billion dollar problem, certainly hundreds of millions of dollars. And local government, certainly during the recession, the best we could do is keep up with the, the, the cracks and the cave-ins. Um, so we were able to stay ahead of that and fix those. But in terms of a major expansion of our system, that hasn't occurred in, how long, 20 years, 30 years? Yeah. Yeah. Since we're in the middle of hurricane season, I hate to call this a good practice, but this is a session for us to kind of learn from our mistakes. Is this a, a moment for us to really uh, take into account what we're doing well and maybe what we could do better? Well, one of the most important things that will come out of this is our after action report. When we re regroup this week and say, okay, you know, this is a test run. You know, this is not game day. This is a practice. And we're going to figure out what we did right, what we did wrong, what we could improve, um, you know, We'll go through the whole gamut with all of the people um, and figure out how we can uh, how we can play better on Sunday um, because this is nothing compared to what we would experience if we had a hurricane. So far, what would kind of a grade would you give our city? I think I think our city did well. I mean, I'm never someone who, who believes that we did things perfectly. Um, so you know, I would say a B plus, but I'm not happy with a B plus. Um, we're going to get it to an A, and the only way you get it to an A is. You know, as an old athlete, you play on game day the way you practice during the week. You know, this is practice during the week. Um, we got it right, but I'm never going to be happy that it's perfect. Do you want to make sure that we keep doing the things that we're doing, seeing more officers, seeing more city 
workers and really uh, interacting with residents to see what their biggest concerns are. Right Absolutely, now. and communication is a big part of this. I mean, we really have been aggressive on social media. I think that has allowed a lot of our citizens to get information. Um, you know, that's going to be a big part of it is how we how we communicate where the problems are, where the closures are, where to watch out for, where not to go. Uh, you guys have been very, very helpful with that. Um, but there's a lot of things that we have done that we're going to work on doing better. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thanks, everybody.